We're going to do four cuts to turn the square piece of wood into the shaped wood for the frame. Hash lines are the table saw table. The yellow is the fence. The reddish orange is the blade. In pencil I've drawn the rectangle of the wood as it gets cut. And in blue is line superimposed on the pencil is the final shape I want to get. X's are the rough edges that I've been marking as I go along. So they're the edges that won't be seen when the frame's assembled. The first cut, I want to have the blade high enough that it leaves half an inch of wood and five sixteenths from the fence. I'll actually put it more than five sixteenths, maybe five sixteenths plus a thirty second, and that'll give me some room to run this angled surface over the jointer after I've done the last step and still keep my three sixteenths bit that I wanted there. Second cut, the blade will be up high in order to intersect that first cut and it'll be half an inch from the fence. The third cut will trim off that little piece to get the final width of three quarter inch. For the fourth cut we'll set the blade at 10 degrees to put the bevel on the frame. The order of these cuts is important. I'll explain why. If we did cut number two before cut number one it seems like that's exactly the same thing but cut number two is more difficult because the blade is high it's making a deep cut into the wood and without this relief cut here there's nowhere for this piece of wood to move away from the blade if it needs to warp or twist as the wood is being cut and I've had that problem if I do this cut first sometimes the wood will close in on the blade that makes a lot of friction and heat and then that messes up the, the cut if we were to do cut number four before cut number three then we wouldn't have a good surface to rest on the table saw because of that angle. So this order of cuts I found works good. For the first cut we want the blade one half inch from the top of the piece of wood. So I've drawn a line half inch from the top and I'll raise the blade up to that point. We want the blade five sixteenths from the fence. We set the gap between the fence and the blade at five sixteenths plus a little more. Remember these X's we put on the wood, those are the less finished surfaces and this is where they'll come in handy. For the first cut I'm going to have an X facing away from the fence and an X facing down. So there's my X facing out and X facing down. There's our first cut. I'm going to cut all four pieces at the same time while the saw is set up, then move to the next position and cut the four pieces again. So I've got them all set up here with the X facing out and down so I don't get mixed up. For cut number two, I'll raise the blade till it's going to match the first cut. It's always a good idea to unplug the table saw when you're making adjustments case for some reason it accidentally started up. Now that we've got the blade at the right height we want it one half inch from the fence. As this is a somewhat tricky cut since the blade is high and the, the board is thin I'm going to use a finger board to keep the cut piece against the fence. Fingerboard is just a piece of wood with a bunch of fine cuts in it so the wood can bend and on this one I've conveniently got attached a couple of switchable magnets. That's a lot easier than trying to clamp it to the table saw. I don't have the fingerboard up where the blade is because then that would just be pushing wood into the blade. I keep it back just ahead of the blade. Push it up against the fence so the fingers bend a little. Switch on the magnets. And now that's a pretty good clamp to hold that tight against the fence. I think you can see that with the feather board here things move much more precisely uh, more safely. There's the cut we wanted to do. 
and there's the piece. And there's the scrap that we'll use for the one inch by one quarter inch spacer. While I'm working on the rest of the frame, I'm going to take these strips which will, that were cut out of the frame and will become the spacers. I'm going to clamp them together because they have a freshly exposed surface which was inside the wood before. There may be moisture coming off of that surface or going into that surface as it acclimatizes and I don't want them to warp. Altogether four clamps. Here comes cut number three. I've got the blade three quarters of an inch from the fence. I've actually put it a, just a hair above three quarters of an inch so that after I've made the cut which will be a saw blade, blade roughness, I can run a hand plane over it to get it smooth because that will be one of the visible edges inside the, the frame. I think you can see the real advantage of using push sticks. If I was moving that through by hand, it would be quite dangerous to have my fingers that close to the blade, but I'd need to in order to keep it against the fence and down on the table. So push sticks just as effective, much safer. So there you can see the roughness of the blade. That's where I paused as I was going through and in other areas, and that's what we'll just take off with a hand plane. On to the fourth cut, so I'll set the blade to 10 degrees. For this cut, the fence will be on the left hand side of the blade. A good way to set the position of the fence is so that the blade will just catch the bottom edge of the wood. That looks good there. So I'll tighten up the fence and check. With the fence on the left hand side of the blade, I've got to have my guide sticks in the opposite hands as I did before. And there's our final profile, same as the drawing. The fastest way to clean up the bevel after it comes off the table saw is to run it over the jointer. If I put it this way on the jointer, it's hard to keep it stable, but if I flip it around, I can register it against the fence and the table, then that's much safer and I get a cleaner cut. If you don't want to use the jointer, you could use a hand plane or block of wood with sandpaper glue.